I put my career at risk and let AI take control of my architecture renders. In this video, I will use Ferris AI and Arco AI to regenerate renders for my old architecture projects. The other day, I was working on my portfolio and I was looking back on some of my older projects. In order to see drastic improvement in these projects, it would require hours, even days, put in to revitalizing all the images and diagrams. I needed a quick solution that traditionally has not been available. So like anyone would, I turned to AI to solve my problems. By using AI, I was able to streamline the design process by creating accurate and realistic renders in a fraction of the time. Arco AI and Barris AI are two plugins I have used to generate high quality realistic renders straight from the 3D model. You don't have to export your 3D model to a rendering software, you don't have to spend time adding tons of assets, lighting, or spend hours adjusting every material in an external program. All this can be done either in your Revit, Rhino, or SketchUp models. All you have to do is open up the plugin, type in a prompt for what you want in the render, and AI will take care of the rest in under a minute. With a click of a button, you can generate multiple design iterations. The first project I'm going to revitalize is this market hall project I did a couple years ago. Our goal was to mix the outdoor market with the indoor market hall, creating a hybrid market style. The selling point of this building was our night render, but I feel like we can still improve it and add additional interior renders as well. We did not have a lot of time to work on these renders, and so that's one of the reasons I wanna go back and regenerate these images to see if I can make higher quality images with AI technology in less time. So the first thing I did is go to ChatGBT. And so what I did here is typed in the mid-journey generation prompt, some of the key aspects of my building. And from there, ChatGBT generated a prompt that I was able to then put into Veris AI and Arco AI. And then those AI plugins would use the prompt I got from ChatGBT to articulate the render that I wanted based off the Revit model I was using. So a very, very simple process, but a lot of different steps that you have to take to get this set up. I didn't want to have to add people or assets. So instead, I used AI to render the interior market scenes. This saved me so many hours and the result was quite promising. The first thing you must do before using these plugins is to turn the display to realistic in Revit. Otherwise, the AI will only render line work. And obviously we didn't come this far just to do that. The best way to create realistic renders is to test out the creativity setting, style strength, and different prompts. And what I mean by that is adjusting these sliders between zero and hundred to find the best balance by trial and error. But you wanna stay in between the dark blue bar in creativity setting, otherwise it will not work to the best ability. For the exterior renders in Veris AI, there was a lot of good consistency in the form, keeping it similar to the 3D model that I had imported. Sometimes if you get too creative, the form will start to adjust and take a form of its own but you're able to experiment with materials and do a lot of different things in a very high pace. With the right settings, this will lead you to highly realistic outputs and renders in Veris AI. Sometimes it has trouble understanding and generating backgrounds, especially in an axon view. As you can see in some of my views, there's too much white space. And so you can control this by setting up better viewports and positions for your renders to do. Low settings also lack material or any difference from the basic 3D model. So make sure you have them roughly about above 50 at least, otherwise you won't see much of a change. Another thing that I really wanted to try to achieve through Veris AI was night renders, but so far it was impossible for me to try and get anything to work. Now for the interior renders, there was really good realistic lighting for the interior spaces. The materials were realistic, and as long as you turned on the interior setting, this would maximize your results. But sometimes it struggled with depth perception and objects were out of place or glass walls were not always rendered correctly. Now, the interior spaces were fairly empty, not a lot of objects, but I'm gonna test out some things later on in this video and see if we can fix that. To keep things consistent for comparison, I used the same chat GPT prompt for both plugins. For the most part, Argo's user interface was very similar to Veris. One of the main differences though is its category menu. This menu allows you to choose from different styles of architecture, among other things that you'll see me test out on the last project of this video. For the exterior renders, the materials stayed pretty consistent throughout the images, although sometimes the walls were patchy 
and materials would overlap. In addition, sometimes Arco created massing extrusions or setbacks that weren't modeled. And sometimes you just have to do trial and error to figure those things out and adjust the creativity settings, but that's something that will happen with the early stages of the AI modeling. One thing I was very impressed by was the reflections off the glass in Arco AI's renderings. It also showed great interior lighting, especially when the renders were at night. At times, the landscape went a little bit too crazy, but for the most part, it did a good job generating realistic context, whether that was landscape or context massing. For the interior renders, a good prompt will go a long way in resulting in realistic interior renders. Arco did a good job including context of objects without having to add them in to the model manually. Trying to create the market hall scene was a little bit tough, but using the right prompts and adjusting the settings helped me extremely. This resulted in some super realistic interior renders that could definitely pass as real life architecture spaces. You have to make sure you use the interior category when doing interior renders. Otherwise you will end up with very weird collages between exterior and interior spaces. The unexpected happened while I was trying to render out a section in Arco AI. One of the renders was trying to turn a section into a floor plan. So I immediately began trying to render out the first floor of my building and the results were pretty shocking. Initially it had some trouble trying to do sections. And so when I went to floor plans, I was expecting some difficulties. The floor plans were very hard to get to work. So I wasn't quitting just yet. So I turned to Veris AI and it did a little bit better job rendering the floor plans, but I wasn't totally sold on the outcomes. I'll have to experiment a little bit more and get back to you guys about the floor plan renderings between these two softwares. But I still wanted to try and create some great elevation renders. And Arco AI did not disappoint. The elevations turned out extremely well, as you can see here. So if you're still a little bit confused about what these programs are and how they're different, I'm gonna go over a couple of key differences and similarities between Veris AI and Arco AI. Veris AI has gained substantial popularity in the recent months. And when you go to YouTube and search AI image generation for architecture, this is one of the main programs that will pop up in your search response. They're constantly developing their tools to provide the best outputs for its user but it is a little bit on the pricier side, especially if you're not gonna use this very often. Now I do have a free trial, you get about 30 or 50 free images to generate. At the moment, Veris AI is only for Revit. Veris AI is simple to use and has incredible outputs. They use similar technology to Midjourney and Dolly, but it's even better because you're able to use your existing 3D model and generate design iterations from that directly. Now, Arco AI is very similar in how the images are generated based off prompts and other creativity settings, but it's cheaper than the competitors, both monthly and yearly, and also has educational plans. You can also test out Arco's free trial and make sure you like it. But right now, where Arco has the step up is you're able to use it in Revit, Rhino, and SketchUp, whereas Veris AI only has a version in Revit. Arco AI also has more unique rendering settings that you'll find out later in the next project that I will go over. This video is in collaboration with Arco AI. So we have planned a giveaway for you guys. So stay until the end and I will go through the details of what that giveaway is. This project was a student learning center. I'm interested to see how these AI rendering engines handle generating the site context around the building. This time around, I'll try to push the boundaries of each software, testing its creativity to see how far it will go. I imported some trees and scale figures just to test out how they would register within the final renders. I found that the first couple renders we did were lacking context and scale. Veris AI did a great job recognizing the form and executing well for this building. Through testing, I was actually able to add a snowy effect to some of the renders, which turned out quite amazing. You can also turn on turbo nature and the atmospheric effect to create more layers of complexity for your renders. Sometimes there are small inconsistencies in form or mapping material, which is easy to understand, but too high creativity strength leads to very unclear renders and they look very messy. I wanted to take Veris AI a step further. I had previously struggled trying to get people, trees, cars, and other objects to appear in these renders. So I went ahead and added a few imported models to see how they would register with AI. This definitely helped and could provide very useful in the future. But the goal of using these AI plugins is to put as little time into the renders as possible. So I started exploring with a prompt to see what I could do. These are a few of my results. Still not as good as having the imported models, but could work as a starting point. This is where I started to have a lot of fun. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to dive deeper into the different categories of Arco AI. 
These diverse categories provided a great library of unique styles. The styles ranged from classical to minimalist and included three main fields, architecture, interior design, and landscape architecture. My personal favorite was testing out the fun settings, like designing your own building out of Legos or having your building take on the characteristics of a random famous architect like Zaha Hadid or Frank Gehry. I can see these styles and categories becoming extremely useful when you're in the ideas phase, trying to test various creative iterations. For some of the styles, the forms got a little crazy, but overall did a good job contributing to the outcome of the render. You don't have to use a prompt when using the style because they have good influence, but prompts are still helpful for nailing down the perfect high quality renders you want. Now that we're done, I wanted to go back and compare all the renders side by side to see the similarities and differences between the two plugins. For the Market Hall project, these were the best rendering outcomes from each software, both interior and exterior. Just thought it'd be helpful to compare the two. For the Student Learning Center, these were the most creative renders, both interior and exterior, testing out unique ways that AI can boost your projects. Has a lot of potential as shown by these renders. Comment below on which one you think did a better job. Here are some of my takeaways for how AI can help with the architecture design process. It will be great for testing out ideas in the early stages of your project, especially when you're trying to figure out styles, materials, and how the massing will look within the context. It can also be very useful later on in the design process where you can make adjustments to the 3D model and update the renders in real time. But this is also very helpful when meeting with clients. So when they don't like something, you can easily change it real time with ease. But if you're also looking to just have some fun, I highly recommend trying it out. I can see myself spending hours just messing with the settings and seeing what I can come up with. One of the potential workflows I could see evolving from using this AI technology, taking these renders into Photoshop and adding anything that was missed. So why would you use this AI rendering over traditional rendering software by using an AI rendering plugin like Veris or Arco? It saves you both time and money, which is definitely a win-win and a great asset to have. It also gives you the ability to quickly generate ideas and concepts, but also doesn't require a lot of file size on your computer as they're just plugins. They don't require you to import any models or anything into their software. It just does real-time updates based on your 3D models, whether that's in Revit Rhino or SketchUp, which is super easy to use. I went over some of the benefits of using AI software. Now I'll go over some benefits of using the typical softwares like Lumion and Twinmotion, etc. When using these softwares, you have full control of where the placement of your trees, your objects, and your people go, which is sometimes completely random using the AI rendering. When you use these rendering softwares, they're consistent every time. When you put a wood wall, it gives you a wood wall with the exact texture that you put on there. If you place a person in a chair, it'll be there when you render it. This isn't quite true with the AI rendering plugins. Sometimes they have a mind of their own and if you intentionally wanted the building to be wood or glass, there's still a chance that it does not do that. If this video has inspired you or piqued your interest in using these AI tools, then you need to enter this giveaway. I have partnered with Arco AI to give away a free month long trial to five of my subscribers. To enter, you first must be subscribed and then you need to comment below what you want to use Arco AI for. The last thing is to leave an additional comment on another video on my channel and let me know that you came from this video. It is so easy to enter. You can get this done before this AI rendering finishes.